What's the most satisfying act of I don't give a care that you have ever witnessed? My cashier in Amsterdam was literally just taking my groceries and sliding them across but not scanning them and then putting them into my bag. She scanned the last thing for like two euro and goes, that'll be two euro. She did not give even half of one care. My ex-boss had a customer throw her money on the counter when my boss clearly had her hand already out waiting to be given the money. So when my boss went to give the change, she just threw it back. Coins went everywhere, but the look on the lady's face was priceless. Didn't see it, but it was talked about at my old restaurant. My friend with autism was getting an interview for a second restaurant job. The chef doing the interview asked this question and got this response. I could be the biggest jerk when things get heated. How do you feel about that? Well, if that's the case, then I don't want to work for you. Someone's girlfriend was yelling at them in the middle of a mall. This dude called up his mate and asked to get a ride home and left her speechless. Don't know how that relationship ended up. Was living and working from home on a super busy street. One day I hear a ruckus out front. There's an SUV stopped in the middle of the road, the occupants apparently having a fight. No traffic could get by and wouldn't you know it, like 10 cars back there's a deputy's car. Deputy walks up, already angry by the shape of his stride. Now I couldn't hear anything up to this point, but things got very loud. He demanded to know what the issue was. Driver wanted the passenger out of the car. Deputy asks the passenger whose car. Passenger begrudgingly says it's the driver's, but that they help pay for it. Deputy, out of the car. Passenger, but. Deputy, now. Out. Passenger gets out. Goes to stand on the curb as directed. Deputy, to the driver. Drive. Passenger. But how am I supposed to get home? Deputy, walk. Slash turns, walks off into sunset. Seriously, that last walk was the coldest darn command I'd ever heard. The deputy was 1000% done with everyone's nonsense that day. In college, we had this professor for physics who liked to pick on a few students, basically me and a few others. We had an exam and he would take off major points over trivial items, cases where people were getting the correct answers, but he didn't agree with our work, stuff like that. And we're talking getting two twentieths on a question, which pretty much messes you over. After insulting us, the professor gets up and solves a problem on the board and made a trivial mistake, the kind of one that nearly caused us all to fail his class. One of the guys gets up, writes F on the board, gives him the middle finger and walks off. Truly the hero we need. Had an inland flight about three years ago. This kid in the row behind me, probably six, eight years old, started to kick my seat after takeoff. It was not a long flight, about 1.5 hours. But I hate this kind of stuff. So I turned around and sure enough, that kid was kicking my seat, while his mom and dad were sitting on either side of him, pretending to not notice. First, I kindly asked the dad if he could make him stop, and he somewhat tried to convince his kid to stop. The kid sulked, but seemed to get the memo, at least for one minute, and then proceeded to kick my seat again, and once again I turned around, and this time dropped the pleasantries, and told them that this was a golden opportunity to teach their kids some manners. As this is Norway, and some people are starting to feel more entitled than others, this didn't go that well, and mom started to yell at me, and that he is just a kid, and needs to express himself. It is at this moment the flight attendant arrives, and I try to explain the situation, while this kid's rude mom and dad try to trivialize my complaint, by saying I'm the one who is making a scene. The flight attendant, not wanting any trouble as we are miles above ground, tries to explain that kicking the seat can be annoying, and that we all should just get along. Flight attendant leaves and kicking commences, so I simply picked up my stuff, walked to the row behind them, asked the woman behind them if she would be so nice to move to the window seat so I could get the middle seat. She just smiled and nodded. I sat down behind the kid and started kicking for the 40, 50 minutes that were left of the flight. At Costco, this older gentleman was screaming at my boss because apparently all the handicapped parking spots were occupied. My boss asked for his information so he could write a complaint. We had little forms for that, nothing really official, mostly to shut up people. Are you a member? No. Well, that's it then. My boss then put the little form in the garbage can and walked away. The old man was stunned. My location for work has 1,000 people being laid off in five weeks. We've basically started doing the bare minimum. We've been playing cards against humanity and streaming TV shows. We do about two hours of work, then spend the next seven messing around. Speaking of, I got to go, I'm hosting the next game. Worked a terrible fast food job when I was 15. Girl I worked with got fired. The manager was a real witch says to her as she's escorting her out of the building that she needs to return her work shirt cleaned. Girl whipped it right off and threw it at her. Walked out to her car in her black bra and drove off. Darn, I wish I'd got her number. It was me doing it. I worked at a 24-hour restaurant. 
My shifts mostly were wed Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 6 p.m. to 4 a.m. The manager of the restaurant really believed I wanted his job, so he would write me up for the most ridiculous things. One time he wrote me up for a bad review from a customer on a night that I wasn't even working. That one got him in trouble with the regional manager. Moving forward, it was a stupidly busy Saturday night about 5.45 p.m. I got into work and he met me with yet another write-up, this time for allowing the kitchen to run out of a particular item during my last shift. I didn't even do the orders, but apparently it was my fault. So I went back to my car, took off my uniform, put on normal clothes I had in there, walked up to the kitchen counter where he was busy with the kitchen staff and some waitresses and waiters. He looked at me, told me what area I would be working that night. I looked him dead in the eye and said, I don't think so. He said it again, and again I said I don't think so, this time handing him all of my uniforms. As I turned to walk out of the restaurant he called out after me, you can't do this, you are rostered on. I turned, pulled my height and said, oh honey I can and I just did. As I have been rostered for only 37 hours in total each week for the past 6 weeks, it is deemed I am part-time. As a part-time employee, I am only required to submit my resignation. I am not required to give you any notice. He called me about an hour later and begged me to go back. Yeah, forget you mate, that's not happening. It's not. One of my high school teachers was just before retirement. I remember, on the day of the final exam, he handed out the test papers, then sat down at his desk and read the newspaper, with it opened up all the way in front of him. He couldn't see us and vice versa. The smart girl in front finished first and just passed her paperback. It went all around the class. Not the first care was given by him on that day. This girl at my school had just recently moved in but never really said much. She also had very short hair, and because of the area I live in a lot of people made fun of her for this. One day some guy went up to her, calling her a slur and a derogatory term. I guess she finally had enough of people teasing her and told him, I had cancer so forget off. In high school, I was a senior and he was a sophomore, and we had gym together. He would make nasty sexual comments about me constantly, just gross. I reported it to the gym teacher who laughed it off. The last straw was as we were getting off the bus after a field trip, and he grabbed my behind. I got off the bus, handed my stuff to a friend, and the minute his feet touched the ground, I went at him, all 110 pounds of me just wailing on him. He couldn't get a punch in even though my friend said he tried LOL. I blacked his eye, bloodied his nose, pulled out a chunk of hair and scratched him up pretty bad. I quit when he dropped into the fetal position, then I just walked home. It was great. Monday I got called into the office because this went down on school property. I got the gym teacher in trouble for inaction and was suspended from the bus for a month. Dude got a three-day suspension for grabbing. When he came back, his face was still pretty colorful and he got teased relentlessly for getting his behind kicked by a girl half his size. He grew up to be a drug addict in and out of jail. ETA. This was in 91, so the no-tolerance policies weren't in effect yet. When I delivered pizza, we had this older driver, probably in his 20s, who came back from a delivery and was pretty annoyed. A few minutes later, the store got a phone call complaining about him. Essentially what happened was, a regular pie delivered was $11.97, and the person handed him $12 and asked for their change. He said okay, went back to his car, and got three pennies, and looked the woman in the eyes, and rolled the pennies between her legs into her house, and walked back to his car. Working Geek Squad, another agent was really upset that day, and had a rough patch of a few clients who were really mean and extremely rude to him. After bearing through them, and after about a 10-minute break he helped another client, their first words were, all right, Best Buy gave me a bad product that broke after six months, and I want you to fix it right now. Which he explained that there's a process and he couldn't fix it right now. And the guy cut him off and said, I don't care, get it done. Well, he sat there for a second quiet and took off his badge, slapped it on the table, yelled, forget you, then started walking towards the front door with middle fingers up, pointing at everyone, then said, and forget this place, and walked out. When I went home and on Steam, I saw he bought Grand Theft Auto 5. He then had 200 hours played in two weeks after that, haven't checked since. One casual employee decided to stop using proper radio procedure. Instead of using his correct call sign, he replied on the radio with Super John Smith, not his real name. He kept doing it all night, despite dispatchers, supervisors, and co-workers telling him to stop. He still works there and has outlasted hundreds of employees. I'd say his work-life balance is pretty good. I still call him Super John to this day. Little bit late, but at Air Force basic training when you first show up, you're either in civilian clothes or the uniform with sneakers because they don't want to mess up your feet, I guess. 
and are affectionately called sneaker weakers. While at chow, if the table behind you gets up, you need to get up and leave regardless if you're finished. If two tables behind you get up, you'll be swarmed by military training instructors and have them scream in your face until you do get up. I had just put my tray back and started to walk out when I looked back and see one lone sneaker weaker by himself in a row of five or six tables, surrounded by six military training instructors. Kid is staring straight ahead and just eating his food one spoonful at a time, while the military training instructors scream in his face. Finishes his food, sets his spoon down, picks up his drink, and just slowly finishes his water, turns his glass over, puts it down, picks up his tray and walks up to put it away while still being screamed at by six military training instructors. Kid is walking out, and I realize everyone in the room is staring at him. He has no emotion, no fear, no smirk, nothing as he walks out of the chow hall. Nothing too crazy here. Some customer on the phone was laying on the entitled attitude a little too heavily the other day. So I hit that end call button. No warnings, no drama. Just not dealing with your nonsense, sorry. People who call someone asking for their help, only to give them attitude really aren't very smart. In high school, I worked as a cashier at a grocery store, and one of the front-end supervisors was a woman in her 60s. She was eventually able to retire, and on her last day, she got to live out the fantasy of every service industry employee, chewing out a rude customer for being a jerk. It was a truly inspiring moment. I was at a restaurant recently. While I was waiting for my friends to arrive, I noticed a couple a few tables away. The lady was going on and on. I couldn't hear the exact words, but it was pretty obvious that they were having a heated argument where she was apparently scolding her significant other, and the guy was just sitting there having an occasional spoonful of his dessert. Exactly three minutes in, he just stands up and walks away. He goes out of the restaurant, gets in his car, and drives away. I was sitting at a table near the window facing the street, and the woman was in absolute shock. The look on her face was priceless. I mean, I shouldn't judge their relationship without context, but the guy sure didn't give a flying fig about what happened next satisfying because it blew up in her face lived in a town with a high population of armenians girl posts that she's glad the armenian genocide happened and is acting like she doesn't care what people are saying when she gets to school legit death threats start coming in and her boyfriend has to leave the school from all the harassment her family ended up moving because people kept up the onslaught even months later this girl was an awful person bumped into an ex-girlfriend of mine with her new fellow in a restaurant I had arrived on my own but was waiting for someone. Anyway, I see them, and vice versa, and they start giggling to themselves, probably discussing what I was doing on my own or whatever else. It was clear I was the butt of the joke. Fifteen minutes later, my date arrives. Drop dead gorgeous nine-tenths five-fit nine blonde, by far the best-looking girl I ever dated. We exchanged pleasantries and were taken over to our table. I have never seen two people's expressions change so much in my entire life than when they saw me sit down with this girl. It was amazing. I felt like a superhero. I was playing paintball in Oklahoma at a D-Day event. A lot of the guys there are veterans or currently in. There was a guy that was angry because he got shot and he confronted the guy that shot him and pulled a knife. Little did he know the guy was special forces and he just goes like, what are you going to do with that? The angry guy tries to stab him and the special forces guy proceeded to break his wrist and take his knife like nothing ever happened. Referees watched it happen too. Nobody said anything. My friend once told the physical education teacher to forget off. The physical education teacher made us all run some laps after the fourth lap. My friend stopped to take a breath, and the physical education teacher told him, Why are you standing just there? My friend said with no care, How about you run fat behind? Super late, but anyways. My older sister has some, but the most satisfying was, when back in 2015, we were both working at this bad place with a bad boss, bad pay, etc., the job consisted of us listening to recordings of multiple radio stations and identifying all the ads that played during the day. The company provided the cheapest headphones so it was hard to hear. Sometimes the audio quality was horrendous, so we were stressed because sometimes you couldn't hear well. And we have a deadline. So there was this lady who acted like a gossipy teenager but was well over her 30s married with kids. She would not shut up, and since she started working there, girls who used to be quiet had started to talk and yell loudly because of her. So one day... Just when we had started our shift, this woman arrives and starts practically yelling. She was getting louder every day, I swear. And my sister, a barely five. One woman stands up and screams at the top of her lungs to, Shut up! She said something like, I don't arrive early to hear your gossip. I need to work and you're a hindrance in the office. Grow up, you're not a little kid. You should know how to behave yourself. And if you have any problem with me, let's fix it outside. 
I'm not afraid to beat the crap out of you. All this was in Spanish, so my translation is not the best. Just imagine more rage and cursing. After it was dead silent, nobody talked after that for hours, and the woman went to the bathroom to cry, and no one did anything to my sister. Our direct boss only told her to speak kindly next time, but no repercussions. I guess many others were fed up with this woman, but I will never forget it. I would have cheered if I hadn't been in shock. Paramedic here. Witnessed a crew transporting a familiar face to the hospital. This particular patient had a hankering for pain medication and would call one to two times each day, usually about 30 minutes after shift change at the hospital, so they'd end up with different doctors. Anyway, we just recently enacted a policy which allows non-emergent stable patients to be placed in the waiting room of the hospital instead of just skipping to the front of the line. Well, this patient didn't think it was right that they were going to be made to wait for their morning fix, so they refused to get off the gurney. The medic attempted to get the patient off the gurney and into a chair for a solid 15 minutes before literally picking them up by their belt and arm and placing them on the floor. What's better is he continued to hold the patient by their belt so they couldn't get back on the gurney as it was wheeled away. The only thing he said after walking back to the EMS room was, this will be really fun to explain to Frank tomorrow, with the biggest grin ever. Frank was our manager and had a wonderful forehead vessel that I'm sure pulsated nicely while having said discussion the next day. I was working a double at a restaurant after closing the night before. The shift started at 10 a.m. and ended around 11 p.m. with a 30 minutes break between lunch and dinner service. I was about five months late and the manager, Reed owner's errand boy, tells me about half an hour before my lunch break that the owner says I have to stay on my break. Now the owner was a real piece of work. I have stories to tell about that guy. I looked that spineless manager in the face and said, you can tell owner he can go forget himself. I got fired so fast for that stuff and it was way worth it. I was tired of making money for that jerk. I worked in a hotel that had a full service restaurant with a buffet in the center of it. Minutes before closing up, we had a customer come in with a friend. She was already upset and whining because the hotel gave her vouchers for the buffet, but she wanted to order off the menu and didn't like that she'd have to pay for it. She ended up ordering two eggs and wanted them poached hard. I bring them out and she immediately stabs the egg and complains that the yolk is too soft. Sends them back. We check and it's a standard hard poach. She just wants them rock hard apparently. I bring out the next set. Same complaint and they're sent back again. Repeat once more. Our cook was an old grumpy person that had been working there 30 plus years and very obviously ran out of cares to give a long time ago. After I brought the last set back, he cursed under his breath and said he'd bring out the last set. He was done and wanted to go home. I go out to clean off some tables and see him storm out with a plate. He goes to the buffet in full view of the customer, grabs two hard-boiled eggs, and walks them to her, throws the plate down without a word, and walks back to the kitchen. It took everything I had not to burst out laughing as the customer stares in shock for a few seconds before she starts screeching to our manager. I was training a new bartender at this fairly upmarket restaurant nightclub. She'd previously worked at a dive bar for students. Second night into her training, the two-foot-long rubber shots mat with the Red Bull logo on it disappeared off the top of the bar. My trainee went around the other side of the bar to look for it, thinking it had fallen off. Next thing I know, she's pulled it out of the back of a dude's pants and slapped it back on the bar. She then grabbed him by the upper arm, spun him around so that he was bent over the bar and spanked him on his bum, I mean really walloped him while telling him off loudly for being a stupid idiot. And then she returned to the bar and washed her hands to get the stupid off of her. Wait, have we really not included possibly the best ever answer to this type of prompt? Read and enjoy. I was once on a U.S. military ship, having breakfast in the wardroom, officer's lounge, when the operations officer, OPS, walks in. This guy was the definition of not a morning person. He's still half asleep, bleary-eyed. Basically a zombie with a bagel. He sits down across from me to eat his bagel and is just barely conscious. My back is to the outboard side of the ship, and the morning sun is blazing in one of the portholes putting a big bright circle of light right on his barely conscious face. He's squinting and chewing and basically just remembering how to be alive for today. It's painful to watch. But then, Zombie OPS stops chewing, slowly picks up the phone and dials the bridge. In his well-known, I'm still totally asleep voice, he says, Hey, it's OPS, could you shift our bar, Pat? Yeah, 165, thanks. And puts the phone down. And then he just sits there, squinting, waiting. And then, ever so slowly... I realize that that big blazing spot of sun has begun to slide off the zombie's face and onto the wall behind him. After a moment it clears his face and he blinks slowly a few times, 
and the brilliant beauty of what I've just witnessed begins to overwhelm me. By ordering the bridge to adjust the ship's back and forth patrol by about 15 degrees, he's changed our course just enough to reposition the sun off of his face while he eats his bagel. I am in awe. He slowly picks up his bagel and for a moment I'm terrified at the thought that his own genius may escape him, that he may never appreciate the epic brilliance of his laziness, since he's not going to wake up for another hour. But between his next bites he pauses, looks at me, and gives me the faintest sly grin, before returning to gnaw slowly on his zombie bagel. My daughter, who was in the throes of being a three-nager, if you have kids you get it, kept turning the TV on as the button was right at her eye level. I redirected her over and over again, to no avail. I finally pointed at the bottom step of our staircase, which was our timeout spot, and told her, if you turn the TV on one more time, you're going to have to sit in timeout. She thought about it for a second, turned to the TV, pushed the button to turn it on, and promptly walked to the bottom step of the stairs for her prescribed timeout. Zero cares given. Bro, my first year in high school wrestling, it was after the season. We played this game called chess, where the team would be divided into two, and each side would have a king. We weren't allowed to get off of our knees and had to wrestle the other team. The goal was to expose the other team's king's back, get his back onto the mat, for a pin which was an instant win. Dude, this senior is the king for the other team. Me and my freshman friends try to gang up on him to get him over. Four dudes trying to get this other guy on his back at the same time. Tell me why this guy as his team is coming to help just goes, nah guys don't worry about it. And everyone just goes all right and returns to taking out other people. Then the dude proceeds to start giving us advice on how to properly get him over in the calmest tone while we're struggling for our lives. And as if that wasn't enough humiliation, he and coach have a small little conversation while we're pouring out heart into turning this dude onto his back. As if we were bugs. It was only so savage because coach made the losing team do 100 push-ups. I was at a car race with my mom and grandpa. We sat in our normal seat and this huge family sat directly in front of us. The parents would stand up in our way every single time a race started and ended. Usually the most exciting parts. We decided to move, just scooting a few feet to the left because it wasn't super busy. Also the reason we couldn't figure out why they had to sit right in our way. They all left to get food for like 40 mines and my mom was already irritated so when they came back and sat exactly in front of us again she was furious. They stood up again for the beginning and end of all the races and on one of the last few my mom had it. She stood up and spoke loudly, not screamed or anything. Are you stupid? They turned, stunned for a few seconds, before muttering something about my mom being rude and moving to the complete other side of the seats. We went back to our normal spots and enjoyed the rest of the races. It's now a very funny inside joke between us. In grade 11, I was basically being bullied by my school rowing coach. She had been a jerk all year, but I loved the sport and my team of three other girls in the boat with me. We're approaching the end of the season and the biggest race of the year, where we hire a few motel rooms for a weekend event. I didn't want to stay with the team in the motel, and instead asked to stay with my mum and exchange student, who I was hosting through the same school. The coach had absolutely no involvement with the exchange, but it was a big commitment with the school. She decided to put her foot down and say I had to stay with the team. My parents knew this jerk was affecting my mental health, and I had to make the most of the time with my exchange student, also my best friend. They supported me, but my rowing coach pulled me into a meeting with the vice principal during class, and the two staff members harassed and manipulated me into changing my mind. During this, my exchange student wandered alone into my sister, who was a year older and in her final year of school. She told my sister what was happening, so my sister marches into the office we were in to ask them, what the heck are you doing? I'm in literal tears. So my sister says, you can't do this, I'm calling mom. Mom had the day off and we lived a few blocks away. So even though my sister was not allowed to have her phone on her person, much less use it. During class, mom was by my side in less than five minutes. The students still remaining in my class basically heard exactly what my mom said to those grown adults of human beings, that we made a commitment to the school with the exchange. And as a result, I would not be rowing with the team. The coach responded by saying, if she doesn't row, the rest of the team can't race with three girls. To which my mom yelled, look how much we care. My mom walked down the hall to the office, signed all three of us out of school for the day, while I went back to class with tears streaming down my face to get my stuff. And we left and got ice cream. Subscribe and like if my content is interesting to you. I post new video every day.